don't take your eyes off this presidential campaign. It's moving fast. This weekend, Vice President Harris is holding meetings with her potential VP picks as an announcement is expected in the next few days. For his part, Donald Trump is speaking at a campaign rally in Atlanta this hour, hoping to regain the momentum the Harris campaign has stolen from him. He's also ditching the next scheduled presidential debate on ABC on September 10th, saying he's accepted a home turf debate on Fox News on September 4th. Harris's response? Nah, boo, I'll be there on the 10th. I'll be dissecting all that with our guests in a moment. But first, I want to address Trump's racist assertion that the VP turned black. If you want to know just how black Vice President Kamala Harris is, just turn to page 101 of her 2019 book, The Truths We Hold. She writes about that time as California Attorney General during last decade's mortgage crisis when she told her staff to get the chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase on the phone. He was about to kill a settlement deal with the states. Told he was on the line, Harris writes, I took off my earrings, the Oakland in me, and picked up the receiver. Listen, Oakland is as synonymous with being black as taking off your earrings before you're about to administer a figurative or literal beatdown. If you didn't know that Harris went to an HBCU, Howard University, or is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, the first black sorority in the United States that was founded at Howard, her invocation of Oakland and earrings would be all you needed to know about her blackness. Harris didn't just happen to turn black, as trifling Donald Trump told a convention of black journalists this week. Her father was black. She was raised black. And we have her mother, Shamala Gopalan, a cancer researcher who immigrated to the United States from India for college to thank for it. Harris writes in her book, quote, for almost the moment she arrived from India, she chose and was welcomed to and enveloped in the black community. It was the foundation of her new American life. But Harris adds this very important point. My mother understood very well that she was raising two black daughters. She knew that her adopted homeland would see Maya and me as black girls, and she was determined to make sure we would grow into confident, proud black women. And we have seen that confident, proud black woman on display in the nearly two weeks that she has been the de facto Democratic nominee for president of the United States. We saw it in the sister girl look Harris gave Senator Richard Burr when he interrupted her during her grilling of then Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. We saw it in how she paused after saying this during her visit to the Wilmington campaign office. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> and we heard it and saw it in Atlanta this week when she looked directly into the camera and challenged Trump to debate her next month. If you got something to say... I haven't seen anything that black on the presidential stage since Barack Obama sang Amazing Grace. Donald Trump is so flummoxed by Harris that he's trying to wield her race and gender as weapons against her, as if they are some kind of disqualifying weight for her to bear. And that's rich coming from a twice impeached, four times indicted, convicted on 34 felony counts former president, who was also found liable for fraud and sexual abuse and indicted for trying to overturn the 2020 election. Oh, and steal national security secrets. If you've noticed, Vice President Harris spends little time addressing Trump's racism and misogyny. That's because Vice President Harris is not running to be the black president or the Indian American president, the woman president, or even the black woman president. She's running to be president, period. Harris is not about to let the foolishness of a mediocre and entitled white man who thinks he's better than she is deter her from her goal. And that's as black as it gets.